My name is Sujen. I am a PM on the VS Code team. Um, and today I'll be talking about data science for everyone and everywhere. Uh, and this is, I think, pretty appropriate for somebody like me. I'm a PM. I am not a trained data scientist. Um, but I do, on a day-to-day -day basis, kind of help our team make data-driven and data-informed decisions. Um, and so hopefully this is you know, providing at least some practical tips and tricks for anybody at any level to do data science uh, in VS Code. So I will uh, give you a brief overview of what I will be doing today. Um, so this is an end-to-end -end demo of creating a web app that really just generates a, a medium-flavored text uh, based on uh, user input. Um, and so we'll be going through some of these steps. And I understand that this is a 25-minute session, and we don't have enough time to go in depth about all of these. Um, and so we might kind of speed through some of these steps, uh, depending on the time. All right, so let's just get straight into our demo here. Um, I also got my handy dandy notes here, so if I just keep looking at it here, um, that's because I have all sorts of things that I want to show you today. Um, so the very first thing that I want to show you today is uh, Codespaces templates. If you go to github.com slash codespaces slash templates, um, you'll be able to see all these awesome uh, Codespace templates available to you. And what these are is essentially um, they create a kind of a an environment, a pre-configured environment for you to develop um, your projects based on uh, your needs. And so the one that I think would be probably useful for somebody who's tuning in for this session is this Jupyter Notebook um, template here. So once you click on that, so I don't know if you guys saw the Codespaces templates page here, but this is what I was showing earlier of all the different projects um, that you can uh, use the template for. And uh, I was talking about this Jupyter Notebook template here for you to get started with. Uh, one thing I did want to mention that I forgot to mention before we, we uh, went on a little break here um, is that you can actually use Codespaces um, without any repository. So it, you don't have to have a repo already on GitHub. You just need to be signed into GitHub or signed up for it, um, and then you'll be able to use it. Uh, so. Um, and uh, for today, though, um, I will actually go ahead and uh, have a repository ready. And this is the one that I, we got ready for today's session. Um, and once you want to create a code spaces for this, um, this is what your screen will look like. So you're probably used to something like this. But if you click on the code spaces tab here, you're able to actually create code spaces even uh, with some options. Um, and uh, today I'll be doing uh, GPU work here, so I'll be doing that. Um, I actually won't be creating a new one because I already have a code space opened here. Um, and that's not because it takes a long time. It, I think it only took like five or six seconds to load. Um, but I preloaded it because I have my Kaggle API keys loaded in here, and I didn't want to do that in front of a live audience. Um, so yeah, it's, it's super great that you can just go ahead and uh, create a code space, and there's literally nothing on my machine that's running right now. Um, and I didn't have to set up my Python environment, which I know is a pain, at least for me. Um, so um, really encourage every, every, anybody to, to try that out. OK, so let me actually go ahead and get to the data science -y part of this demo here. Um, the first thing that I wanted to show you today is, uh, is Data Wrangler. And this really helps with preparing your data, kind of exploring your data, as well as uh, manipulating your data, right? We spend way too much time in our lives doing that. Um, and so this is exactly what what the, this extension is for. It's one of the newer products that we just released about a month ago. So I did want to uh, um, give, give a shout out to the team who developed this. They've been working really hard uh, on this uh, for, for a little while now. OK. And uh, what this does is it really helps you to kind of explore your data uh, in a rich uh, your user interface. Um, so uh, actually, instead of going directly into Data, data Wrangler here, what we'll do is we will go ahead and download um, uh, a Kaggle data set directly from Kaggle uh, using the Chiusano um, uh, Kaggle CLI here. Um, and all I'm doing is downloading this data set here, um, which is a collection of Medium articles. Um, and I could have really just copied it, copied the API command, and just put it in there um, instead of manually typing. Um, but yeah, now that article uh, data is downloaded directly on Codespace. It. I didn't have to do any like weird download steps on my machine and then copy it on here or anything like that. Um, and then after that, I do need to unzip it because it is zipped. Uh, and once I do that, um, I will have a CSV file right there for me to uh, go ahead and work with. Um, and 
while that's loading, um, it, it shouldn't take too long. All right. Um, we will uh, actually go ahead and right click on that and say open and data wrangler. Um, and so since it is a bit of a longer or bigger uh, data, um, it takes a little bit of time to actually load. Um, and you could, if you wanted to truncate the data, right? So then you can say um, how many rows you want to keep for your data uh, to kind of say, oh, but it loaded for me. Um, you, 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 know, you can really do that if you have an even larger data set uh, that you're working with. Um, so this is kind of what your data looks like, right? Um, and you can see some stats about your, each of your columns um, here. And so we'll do some data manipulation here and I'll just kind of speed through some of this um, uh, to kind of give you a quick demo of, of what this experience might look like for you when you're doing this. Um, all right, so let me actually go ahead and filter uh, the posts with tags um, that have um, the tag, um, let's say technology, um, because I want, I only want to, uh, fine tune my model, um, with technology on there. And I don't know why it's not loading here. Tax, is that condition? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, contains technology. Um, and I don't care about case sensitiveness. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be able to see, um, what a preview of what that might look like. So I'll apply, um, and and I'll do this a little bit more, right? So I want some stuff that is a bit newer content. Um, and so I'll work with this timestamp here, but it looks like this data is actually really difficult to kind of filter through. Um, and so what I'll have to do is um, uh, to kind of change this up a little bit, right? So I'll go to format um, and then go and convert this into a um, date time formatting. Um, and I can give it an, a quick example, right? So 2020, 10, 10 is, is what that looks like here. Um, and so once I do that, it'll basically derive uh, that example and apply it on all of my rows. Um, and once I accept it, um, I can actually go ahead and filter on this one. And it looks like this is actually even a object column right now. Um, and so what I can do is uh, go to schema and uh, change the column type from object type uh, to daytime. That way, when I go to filter it, I can say derived column greater than um, a specific date. Let's just say like 2021 and on. Great. Um, so as you can see, uh, quite a bit of things that can be done here. Uh, a few other things, let me actually just get rid of some of these texts here. I don't really need uh, the title, so I'll get rid of the title, uh, maybe the URL, I don't need that, authors, timestamp, okay, these serve their purpose, but I don't need them anymore, so I'll just get rid of all these columns so that I just have one column of text uh, to work with to, to kind of fine tune my, um, uh, my the, the GPT-2 model uh, in a little bit. Um, and it actually looks like I have 580 unique values um, out of the 606 rows that I have. So I might actually do, um, drop, uh, actually let's do, let's go on to, um, find and replace and drop duplicate rows. Um, yep, there we go. Uh, and then that way it'll have, uh, just the rows, uh, just the unique rows. Um, and if you have data, that's not text. Um, so let me do something like formula, uh, calculate text length. Um, you will actually see a preview of kind of the distribution of your data as well in the column. Um, and so you'll be, uh, you can kind of, you know, explore your data a little bit more uh, and go so on and so forth. All right. I will preview all the code steps here and Data Wrangler actually provided the code for me to do, to, to do this. Um, so I will copy all the code, exit out of here um, and let me go to here. Um, and go ahead and run that. All right. So Data Wrangler generated all this code for me. Um, and it was super easy for me to do that, like in a very UI way. I didn't have to uh, make my notebook really messy. You know, a lot of the times when you're looking, uh, when you're kind of going through this data exploration phase, I mean, at least for me, what happens is that by the end of my notebook, my data is clean, but my notebook is just like, 
really messy. Um, and so that's this is what we got here. So we actually have a clean um, clean data that we did uh, we uh, were able to um, make using a data wrangler. Um, and uh, let me actually just go ahead and df clean uh, and save that to a CSV file. Wow. Um, and uh, medium, let me say articles technology. Um, and so once I do that, I will have, uh, actually, let me put it into a resources folder. Uh, never mind. I will move that over um, right here into the resources folder. All right, there we go. Uh, that way I can delete whatever the bigger uh, files that I had here. So delete them permanently from code spaces. And now if I wanted to actually push uh, the CSV file, a smaller CSV file into get, uh, my Git repo, then I can, I feel comfortable doing that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and restart the kernel. Um, and I actually, let me just fold this um, and uh, fold that over. Um, and yeah, we can actually start go, going and exploring more of the data, right? Um, and so Data Wrangler was super helpful for me uh, in that aspect. All right, um, we will actually go into doing some co-pilot stuff here as well. Uh, and so it, let's go ahead and visualize our data using Copilot. Um, so I actually have one um, kind of a visualization already um, that I created from this text data using the text length. Um, but I actually wanted to create the same plot uh, with some a little bit of coloring, right? So let me copy uh, whatever that I had here, uh, and I'll do Control I, and what that does is that it pops up a, um, a inline Copilot for me. So I'll paste that in here, um, and so uh, I'll get whatever Copilot generates. Um, and let me look at the diff. It added some of the coloring in there. Let me accept that. Uh, and when I rerun it, I'll be able to see a little bit more uh, colorization in my in my uh, chart here. Um, we'll do uh, a little bit more here. I generated some of these, and and by the way, I generated all of these previously using Copilot. I didn't really physically type any of these code here. Um, uh, even this word cloud right here, I um, I meant to hide this line here, but let me just. Let me pretend that you didn't see it uh, and, and do uh, control I, uh, generate word cloud using data frames text column. Um, and Copilot was able to actually write that code for me and that's exactly what you're seeing here um, in the word cloud. Um, something really cool about this is that with your, uh, you, with your generated data, um, what you can see is some options um, uh, with your visualization. I'm sorry, not your data, uh, with your visualization. A uh, couple of things, you can save it. You can also uh, kind of dig into it a little bit more. So if I look, um, at expand my image a little bit, I can go into it and kind of see the, the smaller text here. It says multiple content learn. I was not able to see that in my notebook, but I didn't want to make my notebook visualization really, really big. Uh, so I really like that. Uh, and also, uh, you can copy this to clipboard. Oh my gosh, like you have no idea how much I really appreciate this because a lot of the times I'll like copy and paste um, whatever visualization to my team to kind of go back and forth. Great. Um, and uh, let me actually go ahead and show you how you might uh, uh, go ahead and publish this as a slideshow on GitHub pages as well. Um, so what you can do is uh, whichever code you want to turn into slides, um, you'll do Control sh Shift P to bring up the command palette um, and type switch uh, slide type. Um, and once you do that, you can set your 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 whatever cell uh, into a slide uh, slide slide type. Um, and I'll do that to a few of them here. Um, maybe I'll do it to this one too, um, and then I'll do it to I don't know maybe this one too. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then once you do that, you can go ahead and uh, and say uh, Jupiter and be convert uh, zero. Um, I should have had better naming convention for my 
notebook here. Um, and then I'll do two slides. I don't want any input. Um, post serve. Um, and once you do that, you'll be able to see um, uh, kind of your whatever uh, slideshow that you wanted to create from your notebook here. Um, and so let me actually uh, control uh, interrupt that. Um, and then w when you're ready to um, push that as a GitHub page, what you can do is uh, go to the source control tab and say uh, created slide, slides, um, and commit those changes. Let me commit and push it right away uh, so that once you go here into your repository, uh, you'll be able to see your slide right over here. Uh, and you go to your settings, your GitHub pages, and then you can say deploy from branch, and I want it to be deployed from my main branch in the root. Um, and then that'll actually uh, create a GitHub pages for you. Uh, we won't wait for it. We will actually come back to this a little bit later. Um, and just a little tip here, if you click on this one, um, it'll tell you that the, you know, it's still deploying right now. Um, and if you go into details, you can actually see the deployment uh, log messages and stuff like that if you wanted to. Um, okay, so let me actually go into um, a one other notebook here that I have. Um, this is the notebook where I actually am fine tuning the GPT-2 model from Hugging Face. Um, and let me actually just run all of this because I don't, I, I will be fine tuning this model on the fly. Um, so hopefully this works, crossing my fingers here. Um, and uh, a lot of this for me was actually written with the help of Copilot. Um, like I said, uh, Copilot, or I am not a data scientist, so Copilot really, really helped me out here. Um, I actually call Copilot Hermione because it like literally helps me so much. It's intelligent, it's magical, I love it. Um, and so for an undertaking like this, for like fine tuning a model thing, uh, fine tuning a model, right? Um, what I would usually do um, is bring up this Copilot chat here um, and kind of define like what is the task that I want to accomplish. So I would say things like, how do I fine tune um, GPT-2 from hugging face using PyTorch? Um, and then Copilot will tell me kind of step by uh, step by step and give me a little bit of a, a, a code preview um, of what this might look like. Um, it's running the fine tuning model code right now. So it, it takes a little bit of, <laughs> of uh, time to generate this code here, uh, the response here. But what you will see is nothing more exciting than what you see on my editor screen here. Um, so it's going to look pretty much similar um, to, to, to this year. So if you look at this right here, a lot of this looks like a lot of this. Um, so Copilot really helped me out here. And what I did was I just copied a little bit at a time, um, put it into code cells to make sure that it, uh, every step of the way it works. Um, and so it looks like it's running the training run right now. Uh, it's almost done. Um, and so I'll be able to hopefully show you um, the, the output of the model so that we can infer it. Um, once it's done, I'll actually move on to this this next model, uh, the next notebook that I have here where I am inferring the fine-tuned model. Um, you can already tell that in this results, uh, we have created this results folder, excuse me, um, the, the model has output this results folder and you'll be able to see, oh, the model here, it looks like it's actually already done. Um, and so uh, with this model here, we can infer it directly in either the same notebook or a different notebook in the workspace. And that's exactly what I did here. So if I run all of it, um, I'm taking the model from this workspace um, and I am uh, tokenizing um, the model and, and getting the model to output this, this text here. So I, my input text was data scientist uses VS Code as their tool um, to teams who Microsoft Teams need more speed in terms, I don't know. Um, it was probably a bad idea for me to fine tune a already good GPT-2 model with like 500 um, rows of like not a very good text. Um, but uh, hopefully you get the idea of how you can actually do this. If you wanted to fine tune whatever model, um, you can totally do this on, um, on, on code spaces uh, or on your, on your uh, whichever machine that you're on. 
Um, I don't think I'll be able to get to show you how to create uh, your app, um, but luckily Pamela, the in the next section will next next session will be able to show you all of that. Um, I did want to show you um, that I literally for me when I created the app, all I did was export whatever my inference code into a Python script, um, and then I kind of went down the line um, uh, and and asked Copilot. Um, so what do I do next? What do I do next? How do I create a streamlit app and that kind of stuff? So uh, this is this is the code that I ended up with. I wrote maybe like not even half of it, um, and uh, you'll be uh, hopefully able to if I do uh, real quickly if I show you streamlit run app local that pi, and I think I will have to let it um, do that. Um, uh, then, then I'll be able to show you uh, the the finished app that I made, um, and this was all done using Code Spaces Copilot. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the session today. Um, you can say VS Code Day is awesome, and hopefully it'll generate um, whichever output that it wants to generate from the model. Um, it's like having a day without writing code. Yeah, I, that's actually very true. Um, so, and yep, and it looks like, going back on my promise here, um, it looks like uh, the GitHub pages was actually deployed um, and you'll be able to see um, and share your, uh, you will share your, your uh, what is it, your uh, slides <laughs> um, publicly or, or whoever you wanna share it with on your team. Um, I will end it with this slide here. Hopefully you can take a snapshot of it. Um, it's just uh, a few more links that, that I hope that you guys can, can take a look at um, and try out on your own. Thank you for being with us today. <laughs> What a jam-packed demo. And I had the pleasure of, I, I mentioned it before you came on, I had the pleasure of interviewing you on the on the Python polls. We have a brand new demo. I haven't seen all of those things um, put together before, so thank you so much. And I like I, I appreciate the bravery. I Last time I got it, had a chance to do a demo, I was too scared to, <laughs> to do it live. So you did such a great job. I'm, I'm so glad we got to jump into that. Um, and we also have some questions yes. for you from the audience. Um, so. Let's start out with, can you tell me more about the Jupyter Power Toys extension? Yeah, so the Power Toys extension is basically an experimental extension um, that we have. So it's uh, right off the bat, we actually do not support it as well as we, we support the other extensions on, on, on VS Code. Um, basically, it provides some of the really cool features that we think would be awesome to have in the Jupyter extension. So if you do want to try out things like, um, oh, let me, let me look at my notes here. Um, if, like um, kernel management, contextual help are, are the two of the ones that get shouted out a lot of the times. Um, so if you want to try those out, um, there's a lot more features, but those are the two that, that uh, I know are very popular from that extension. Yes, those are very popular and um, very interesting. And I love that there's this through line of community mm -hmm. through all of it. So like we can res we only have so many engineers working on improving the experience of VS Code. So we'd like start with trying to address all of the things that you want. And then you have these like power toys to jump in a little bit more and you can request more features and all of that. Like I, I really appreciate that kind of um, cycle and iterative Absolutely. approach. Yes, totally. And just to echo everything Don said, this was an amazing demo. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is how with Code Spaces, you don't have to do any extra setup steps for the terminal or debugger. So it's such a great use case to be able to use that for your data science workflows as well. Um, another question we have in the chat is from Slower Cuber. Um, so in your demo, is word size an indication of relative population? Um, I don't think so. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I didn't look into my data set as much as I should have been. I just really quickly went through it. I, I, it was really, truly a live demo. I love <laughs> um, that. And so, yeah, I, I wish I can look at it a little bit more and I will, I, maybe I'll do that after after the session. We got to have you back on the Python Pulse and yeah. we can do a part two maybe. Yes. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I had a lot Absolutely. more stuff here. <laughs> uh, so uh, last question, what does it mean that Jupyter supports IntelliSense as it claimed on the VS Code extension marketplace? 
Yeah, so Jupyter Notebook um, is actually considered uh, what we called a first class citizen in VS Code. And so what that means is getting um, Python IntelliSense, uh, whatever IntelliSense actually, or whatever language support that you expect to get from any of your code files. Um, so if you go to like Markdown files or Python files, whatever uh, language support that VS Code provides, plus any of the, the ones that you added with other extensions, um, you should be able to get uh, in your notebook cells as well. So uh, it, it should feel very native um, and uh, what it, you know, it, it should, it should feel like an elevated experience from working with uh, notebooks compared to, I don't know, maybe a classic one that, that you're used to. Great. And maybe let's try to squeeze in just this very last one. Um, how can people follow up with any bugs that they run into? Oh, yeah. Um, we're actually, our team is very active on GitHub. Um, so feel free to file issues on GitHub. Um, once you, we'll, we'll reroute it to whoever is need, uh, whoever needs to address it um, as needed. But um, yeah, feel free to just, even with like feature requests or, or even bugs or anything like that, um, go ahead and file a GitHub issue uh, at github.com slash Microsoft slash uh, Jupiter, I believe. VS Code, VS Code dash Jupiter. Awesome. Yep. Thank you so much, Sujin, for being here. We love the demo. Um, and all those links that Sujin mentioned, we will make sure to have in the session description when it's available on demand.